Hey, I'm Corey Congilio, and welcome to Tone Tips. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about clean boosts. I'll show you some of my favorites, how I use them, and what makes each one special. We're gonna work with the Vertex Boost, the Sur Coco Boost Reloaded, and the new Archer Clean from J Rocket Audio. I'll break each one down into its own specific segment, and uh, you'll really get to see how maybe using one or more of these in your rig can help out your tone. All right, sit back and let's talk about our first pedal. Here we go. So let's take a look at some of the gear I'm using before we jump into the pedals. I'm using my Mario Martin T style of guitar going into my 68 Fender Bassman, out of that into the Universal Audio Aux amp top box for uh, some cabinet modeling, and I'm actually using that for the plate reverb as well. Other than that, it's just the guitar into the boost pedal and then this. And speaking of that, it's the Vertex Boost that we're gonna start with, and the Vertex Boost pedal has become really popular. You see it on a lot of pedal boards nowadays. I've seen everybody from Robin Ford to Wayne Krantz and a whole slew of other players here in Nashville using it. And I use it maybe not so differently than most, but uh, there's some, probably a few things I can uh, can talk about that may be a little bit different than you'd expect. Most people think a clean boost, oh, I just do that and I turn it up so it hits the front end of my amp and I get a little overdrive basically like if I turn my amp up to, you know, from three to five. Well, your, your pedal can help you do that, uh, but there's gonna be other, a few things that I can talk about. So what's unique about the Vertex Boost is uh, it's an ultra linear sort of non-tone coloring uh, clean boost pedal. Uh, I use this in the front of my chain almost exclusively, and I kind of do it to, uh, to buffer my signal. Uh, and make my guitar sound a little bit fatter. So here's the sort of basic tone. Uh, just as straight up clean as I can get it, uh, maybe a little bit of gristle on the top end. So if we kick in the boost, one of the things I like to do is always try to match uh, the tone from the pedal on and the pedal off. Pedal on, pedal off. Not much difference. That always tells me I have a good product. I can feel that the tone's gotten a little bit bigger already, so let's go up to maybe about 11 o'clock and hear what we get. Now if I take the pedal off, it just seems like it got smaller when I took the pedal off. Not cool. I wanna bring that back, and that's kinda of how I run this pedal most of the time, somewhere around 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock to kind of keep the tone. Keep it nice and big and fat sounding. Now, if we want to, we can keep turning this knob up and see what it gives us as it kind of hits the amp. seems to marry with that basement really well and it's got that great slight subtle fender uh, breakup that I that I really enjoy if you take it any more it's probably gonna hit the front end of the amp a little too hard and those low notes become a little less discernible and that's pretty common with uh, pedals going into uh, amps of this variety, whether they're 20 watts or 40 watts and that sort of thing, at least in my experience. If I put the bridge pickup on, I might get a cool result. Let's hear that. You can really hear that sort of low mid and, and low end of the fender getting brown and fuzzy, you know. So you can see just spinning the knob gives you a variety of different sounds, but I like to use it more in the 12 o'clock position. And I also use it kind of as an EQ when I'm switching between single coils and humbuckers. I might turn it off for humbucker guitars and turn it on to get more of a, not so much an EQ, but a, a volume leveling sort of a thing. Uh, and it works really well for that. It's a, it's a great utility knife to have on the pedal board. I always have it first and it helps the tone through the pedals. Uh, killer pedal, I've, I've got two of them, one for each pedal board. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I enjoy having it because it's it's never uh, there's never a moment where I don't want just a little bit of it. It's almost always on. So cool product. That's the Vertex Boost. Let's move on to our next segment where we talk about the Coco Boost Reloaded from Sir. All right. See you then.
Okay, so let's talk about the Coco Boost Reloaded from Sir. Now, it's called the Reloaded because they had the original Coco Boost, which is a larger footprint, larger pedal uh, enclosure. I like this because it's more pedal board friendly, uh, as they like to say. This is a unique pedal because it's uh, really two boosts in one. We were just listening to the knob here on the left, which is the boost. And as we engage that, you can, you can hear it really pushes the amp over the top quickly without it being turned up that much. If we wanted to back it down, we can do that. A lot, lot more subtle right there. You can see I chipped the paint a little bit even from too many stomps. <laughs> but this one has a lot of gain on tap. I mean, it pushes the amp into overdrive really, really quickly. So I don't really use this one so much for the clean boost. Occasionally I will, but here's one of the cool things. When you hold the pedal down while the green light is, uh, when the green light's on there, see it turns red. Now we're actually accessing the mid boost side. Yeah, and I use this more for the boosting of the solo sort of thing. I like to have sort of a pointed uh, mid range uh, frequency that can really cut through the overdrive. And if I'm working with a sound man who maybe doesn't know that my solo is coming up and he can ride the fader, I can do it for him by hitting that mid-range boost. Now this is where it gets kind of fun. Because again, I have the volume of that here. I can back that down if I want. Again, let's just hear it without it. Now there's this three position switch at the top here, which gives you three flavors of mid-range boost. Let's hear them. Turn it down a little bit. The one on the right's pretty broad sounding. If we go back in the middle, it's a little bit more... A little bit more focused even, a little more pointy. Uh, and then the one on the left is kind of nice. Because that's really going to help the solos get out there. Now the, the uh, cue control here, which is really cool, is I can kind of turn that up and emphasize the frequency that's being uh, delivered by that switch. Now, if you have a light overdrive here, I'll put my uh, my Greer Lightspeed overdrive on. And that's gonna give me a nice little grind. And if I add the, uh, the Coco Boost to it, it really helps it jump out now. Take it off. And I'll turn them all off. So what you could do is really subtly stage uh, the gain and the overdrive. And that's how I like to represent my guitar tone. Almost like turn the amp up, turn the amp up, turn the amp up. That's what these pedals are helping me do, obviously, with your feet. <laughs> and that's what pedals have been sort of designed for since the, uh, the dawn of their uh, existence. Um, but the Sir Coco Boost Reloaded is really cool, very versatile pedal. Um, I'm going to be one of those guys that doesn't say everything's great. I think this is awesome. It does have one little issue. Oh, as I bumped my camera there. If I step on the pedal, it doesn't engage until I release it. I'm assuming that's the mechanism that's in that proprietary switch of theirs that allows you to change functions. See, because that you have to hold it down. Um, and that's kind of weird because sometimes if I'm playing and I dig in, I'll step on the pedal and I'll lean into it and I'll want that solo to start, but I really can't do that because I have to let off the pedal. So it's just a quirk of my own. Um, but that's probably the only hang up I have with that pedal is that um, the, the effect doesn't really engage until you release the pedal. 
um, and I'm sure somebody technical can tell me why. Um, I don't know why. Um, so that's it. That's the Sir Coco Bruce Reloaded. And as you can tell, I have the Vertex on one end of my chain, and I have the Coco Boost Reloaded on the very end of my chain. So I'm boosting everything that's I have it after reverb and after delay, because um, I don't necessarily like boosting that signal to go into my reverbs and delays, uh, because it can get a little hairy. Okay, so. That's the Coco Boost Reloaded from Sir. I really, really dig it. Super versatile pedal to have on your board for mid boost or clean boost. There you have it. All right, let's move. Let's move over. Easy for me to say. Let's move over and move on to the Archer Clean from J Rocket Audio. Here we go. Okay, let's take a look at the Archer Clean from J Rocket Audio, otherwise known as Rocket Pedals. Now, Rocket Pedals have had a lot of success with the Archer line, the original silver one, the gold icon, um, and even the Steve Stevens Rockaway model, which has an adjustable EQ on it. So it's kind of like you're getting the Archer with uh, six bands of EQ. I think it's six. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I have one over there. Great pedal. Really dig it. And I often use that as a clean boost as well. Um, but that one has a gain control on it. And one of the cool things about uh, that whole line and, and what it's modeled after, you know, the iconic silver expensive two to three thousand dollar overdrive pedal, right? We all know that one. Uh, when you turn the gain control down, that style of circuit, uh, once it's off, it functions as a clean boost um, and until the gain is rolled back in. Uh, what they've done is they've taken the gain out of the circuit completely, giving you the clean boost aspect, but the same uh, tonal coloration um, that the Archer pedals give you. So this is really cool because now you can have that clean boost, but you can add the color to taste. Very, very cool. Okay, let's check it out a little bit. Um, one of the things I remember I always do is I, I try to get that unity sound. There it is on and uh, it's totally transparent. Really nice. Now as I turn the, uh, the output control up, I'll start to hit the front end of the amp a little bit. does it nice. It doesn't uh, make the amp freak out too much too early. The gain is really tailored well in here. That sounds lovely. Um, our treble control here, we can kind of gas it if we need to. And it really gets bright quickly. Of course, I turned it up quite a lot there, but we'll leave that sort of at half mass there. Turn it off and see what we're getting and what we're losing. Wow. Let's go to the bridge pickup, play some more rock stuff. Let's turn it off. Really musical pedal. Now let's talk about the color control. We'll back the gain down some. Let's bring the color control in. This is cool, it's gonna get you more mid-range. Yeah, already, there it is, yeah. And it takes on a completely different characteristic and makes your amp sound different too. When you're playing single coils, it kind of really gives some new character to your pickups. You take it off, you know. Quite a difference, you know. Look we'll back the gain down. versatile pedal. One of the things I was doing last night when I was kind of taking this pedal for a spin was I turned all the knobs up and it just worked really really well with this basement so check this out. The low end is really intact. Man, it feels really good. It feels like it's an overdrive pedal, but it's really hitting the amp in, in a special way.
you know, that might turn the treble down a smidge or something, but I just thought, it's like, when was the last time you could just take a pedal like that and turn it all the way up and get a result that's that cool? <laughs> So let's take it back sort of a little less aggressive here and see what we get. And I've played really great old Fender amps that kind of sound like that once they're turned up. Really touch responsive. This is a killer pedal. I mean, really, if I had to, I could do the gig with the pedals we did in order. I, or maybe not. I actually shuffle them around. Vertex, Archer, Sir Coco Boost, that amp. And I'd have sort of all different stages. I'd use the Vertex in the first for the first one. Then I'd maybe use the Archer as my overdrive. And then actually, I have the Coco Boost still in line. And the mid-range... Man, adding that to it is kind of fun as well. So just fun for days with clean boosts. Who'd have thought, right, that these pedals would be that versatile and be able to push just your single channel vintage amplifier into, into a bunch of new places. So those are three of my favorite clean boosts right now. It's what I'm using on, uh, whether it be the board I use for studio stuff or travel. Uh, I swap them out from time to time. Uh, and uh, a lot of times, all I need is those. They do the trick depending on what amplifier and what wattage I'm using. So check out the Vertex Boost. Uh, the Sir Coco Boost Reloaded, and the new Archer Clean that should be coming out very, very soon. Uh, and check out the other uh, Archer models from J-Rocket uh, and all the other pedals that these companies make because they do it with a lot of passion, a lot of pride, and they do it for us, guitar players, to make us sound the best that we can. All right, I'm Corey Congilio. Be sure to check me out at CoreyCongilio.com and all the social networks, and uh, I'll see you on the next Tone Tips video. Take care.